Hello friends, today we are doing very specific book recommendations and I am so excited. You left me comments both here on YouTube and on Instagram and I'm going to recommend you books that you have been looking for. So without further ado, I have all of your responses here on my phone, let's get into it. This subscriber is asking for a book that will overwhelm them to tears but leave them feeling hopeful and with a new appreciation for life. I have two recommendations for you. The first one is my favorite book of 2022 and it is How High We Go in the Dark. I absolutely adore this short story collection. It is so heartbreaking and hard hitting, but also very hopeful. Like the title I think will give you sort of the idea of what's happening. I cried over a talking pig when I was reading this. It's a pandemic story. All of these short stories are connected in some way. They all take place in the same universe. And it is dealing with these really tough topics. A lot of children are dying. We're talking about like childhood, youth, and Asia. It's not a fun experience, but it is incredibly hopeful. The next thing I have to recommend is The Traveling Cat Chronicles. I sobbed reading the end of this. It completely took me off guard. I figured out what was going to happen, but I still cried like a baby. This is the story of a man who is trying to give his cat away and it's told from the perspective of the cat. And so he's basically reconnecting with all of these people in his life who he's met at some point and trying to give them his cat and it's never quite the right fit for his cat. We are slowly trying to figure out like why he's trying to give his cat away and it's told from the cat's perspective. So it is kind of funny in that way where the cat is trying to figure it out. The back of the book says, sometimes you have to travel a long way to see what's right in front of you. So it is hopeful, but it did make me sob. This person wants a book that messes with your mind or sanity while reading. For you, my friend, I have a book that I was recommended to read by my professor. My freshman year of college, I had this professor who was fantastic. It was like a great books class. We read a lot of books in class. At the end of the class, we were like, hey professor, can you give us a list of books that you think that we should read? Give us some recommendations. So he gave us a list of books. And at the bottom of the list, I will include a picture if I can find it. At the bottom of the list is four or five things that say proceed with caution. And he said, I didn't use to put this disclaimer on here, but then all of these books, people came to me and told me that these books ruined their life or made them have a mental breakdown. So proceed with caution. <laughs> and this is one of the books that was on that list. It is one of my favorite books of all time. And it is House of Leaves. This book will make you question your sanity. It is set up like a labyrinth. You will have a hard time reading it because the format makes no sense. You will need to use a mirror to read some of this. You will question your sanity. I read this in the middle of nowhere where I didn't have electricity and it was not the best decision that I ever made. <laughs> in this book, there is an old man who dies. Our main character finds this like jumbled up pile of like napkins and papers and like things scribbled on the back of envelopes. And it's this book. The book is being written about a documentary that doesn't exist, that this famous like photojournalist recorded in this house. One day a hallway shows up that shouldn't be there. Like it doesn't fit in the house. The dimensions are not dimensioning. What precedes is expeditions into this hallway and into this horrifying labyrinth that unfolds within this house. It is one of my favorite haunted house stories ever and one of the most confusing things I have ever read and it will make you question your sanity and I hope you enjoy the ride. This next one, maybe you guys can help out in the comments because I also want more books like this. They're looking for a romance that talks about the relationship itself, not how they meet and fall in love, but after. The only thing that I found that I think really encapsulates this is the Heartstopper graphic novel series because in the first volume, we have that typical trope of we have boy meets boy, they fall in love, it's a nice cozy time and then as the series progresses, we get to see them trying to figure out different parts of their relationship as they take new steps in their relationship and get closer and try to figure things out as a couple. I think this is maybe the most accurate representation of like what a high school relationship looks like, but I also want more things in this vein. Let me give you a couple of recommendations of things that I think get close. I think Normal People kind of fits into this by Sally Rooney. We're following, again, high school students, but we follow them into college and beyond, and they're kind of mixed up into each other's lives. They're dating in high school, and they have a dynamic that flips. Our male love interest is very popular in high school, and our female love interest is not so much, kind of like an outcast. And then those roles kind of get reversed in college. They end up coming back to each other and it's just the 
way that they're kind of flitting in and out of each other's lives as they grow and change and I feel like it's one of the most accurate representations of that sort of a relationship but I also don't think it's quite what you want in this situation so again I want your help in the comments. The last thing I'll mention is Rebecca Thorne's Can't Spell Treason Without Tea and A Pirate's Life for Tea. When this book starts we have an established relationship so our two main characters are together but not really able to be public about their relationship because Raina is one of the queen's guards and Canthy is this mage and so these two women can't be together in that life so they basically blow up their lives and they go open a bookstore and tea shop in this small town in the countryside and it is very very tender I liked it a lot if you like legends and lattes and you want like a little bit more action I would recommend this one but something that I did really like about this is we had an established relationship at the beginning and we're kind of following them as that relationship dynamic changes as they grow together. I feel like that's almost what you were asking for but I want more recommendations for this myself so please let me know in the comments what you guys have found. Next up is a book about generational trauma and cyclical behaviors. Nonfiction is okay but I'd love a thriller horror or some type of engaging fictional story. I have a thriller for you. It is called You Know What You Did and it is exactly what you're looking for. I personally gave this three stars, but I, this checks all of your boxes. It's a thriller. Our main character is a wife and mother who is experiencing some generational trauma. She's Vietnamese and her mother experienced the war, came to the United States when she was pregnant with our main character and developed this hoarding. And then our main character now has developed severe OCD tendencies because of the circumstances in which she grew up in, which is a direct result of the war that her mother experienced. And it's a thriller in which our main character's intrusive thoughts seem to be coming true. I found it to just drag a little bit in pace. If you're looking for a book primarily about generational trauma and cyclical behaviors, this is gonna be perfect for you because it's gonna give you that extra oomph to get you through it because it is a thriller. I think you're gonna love it. I was surprised by the twist at the end. I did enjoy it, it just wasn't my favorite thriller that I've ever read. This subscriber wants to feel like they're standing in a creek with your non-creek appropriate pants rolled up as high as they can go while you look for critters. My recommendation for you is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because it is very much this person who is not trying to go on this interstellar adventure who is going on an interstellar adventure and is not prepared for what's about to happen. It's funny, it's fast paced, it's got the here's the guide to adventure, here's a person who is woefully underprepared to be going on an adventure. It's also feeling like after you get home from the creek and you're having like a nice cup of tea, it's a very tea centric story and I personally adore it. Someone else was asking for audiobook recommendations for a road trip and I think this one would actually be perfect for that. I personally read the audiobook on a road trip and absolutely loved it. And there's a whole series, so if you're on your road trip and you're wanting more Hitchhiker's Guide, there's a lot more of them. I have three comments that I'm going to give the same recommendation to. A book with epic fantasy but also heavy in horror, a book that is absolutely dripping in tension and banter with a slow burn, and a book that could be described as phantasmagorical or that seems like the type of book that would use that word. Try to guess in the comments which book is going to fit all three of these recommendations. It is, of course, none other than Gideon the Ninth. It's science fiction, but also horror. It's dripping in tension and banter. It has a slow burn. And it most definitely would use the word phantasmagorical and feels phantasmagorical. So I hope that you enjoy Gideon the Ninth. We are following Gideon, our swordswoman, and Harrow, who is our necromancer of the Ninth House. There's so much lore about this series. I love it so so much. The magic system is based in necromancy, which is just so interesting to learn about, and it's also very dark. It is lesbian necromancers explore a haunted gothic palace in space, and it is fantastic. <laughs> There's also this element to it which feels very almost like video gamey, where we are learning about the magic system and they're trying to complete this test by going through different trials, and it kind of feels like you're playing a video game and learning about the magic system and getting connected to our characters and trying to figure out the mystery that's going on in here, all the while enjoying some incredible banter. One of my favorite books of all time. I'm gonna rapid fire go through some memoirs for you guys. My all time favorite memoir is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. Chanel Miller was the Emily Doe in the Brock Turner sexual assault case, and she has decided that she wants the world to know her name. And she wrote an incredibly well written, incredibly heartbreaking memoir about that time in her life. If you can read this subject matter, I highly encourage you to do so. It is one of the most incredible things that I've ever read. I will forever pick up any piece of writing that Chanel Miller writes because this was 
absolutely stunning. A memoir that I just finished reading that I'm going to talk about a lot in depth in May is What Have I Done by Laura Dockrell. This is a memoir about postpartum psychosis and it is again an incredibly heartbreaking, incredibly informative, incredibly well written memoir about our author's experience with postpartum psychosis. She chose to write it not looking back on the situation that happened but as she was feeling in the moment so it is incredibly difficult to be in her head as she's experiencing this psychosis, but I found it to be just exceptionally well done. The last memoir I want to tell you about, I cannot find to save my life, but it is Rat Girl, and it is a memoir that I've never heard anyone else talk about, and I love it. Especially if you are a fan of Daisy Jones and the Six, you have to read this right now, because it is basically Daisy Jones and the Six, but it is a true story, and it is Fantastic. Our author is the lead singer of The Throwing Muses, and she talks about this one year in her life when she was 18. She was in this band, she was struggling a lot with her mental health, she was on lithium, and she became pregnant, and she decided to go off lithium. We're following her as she kind of goes through this journey. It's this coming-of-age story. It is, again, one of the best memoirs I've ever read, and I just want more people to read it. I love this one. A book like having your cat come and snuggle you after you had a long, hard day. For bonus points, I'm giving you two books that have cats in them. The first one is A Man and His Cat. Our main character is going through some grief and has never had a cat before and if you want to watch someone experience all of the joys and quirks of owning a cat for the first time, just surrounded in this cozy little bundle of joy and fur, you're going to love this book. I mean, just just look at that adorable cat. The other option I have for you is The Girl in the Galdurian, which is volume one of Lightfall, and there is a cat and this book too, and it is an adventure cat. And you know what? Sometimes the cat is really grumpy because he gets drenched in the rain and sometimes he tries to steal scrambled eggs off your plate, but he is the cutest thing. And one of my favorite parts of this book. This book also just is so sunshine and coziness. It just, it feels like your cat coming to snuggle you at the end of a long day because things happen in here, right? There's stuff that's going on. We're trying to find this elderly pig wizard who's got some dementia probably going on. He forgets things. We're worried about him. And we have this unlikely duo, or Galdurian, who is very golden retriever energy and he's excited to be on this adventure, but he's also got some trauma in his past. And we have our girl who's very anxious and very worried about her grandfather and about a lot of things in general. And they're this cozy little duo and they have this adorable cat and it's just so tender and so cozy and one of my favorite graphic novels of all time. Here you go. On a similar note, a book to read when you're overwhelmed is A Psalm for the Wild Belt. The dedication literally says, for anybody who could use a break. If you think you could use a break, this is, this is the cure. This is this is what you need. Our main character Dex is feeling very unfulfilled in their life and they strive out on this path to become a tea monk and it's a struggle, it's hard for them and they are trying to figure out how to do this and they're also still feeling unfulfilled. They end up meeting this robot called Moss Cap and it develops this really unlikely friendship with Dex in this one and in the sequel, A Prayer for the Crown Chai. We follow our two main characters, our monk and our robot, as they explore this world that we're in, which is this solar punk post-capitalist kind of utopia. They're also exploring each other and each other's ideas and questioning things and trying to figure figure out how they fit together. Moss Cap is trying to answer the question, what do humans need? And Dex is trying to find their purpose in life. If you are feeling overwhelmed, this is what you need. Switching gears, the subscriber wants a book that has the same feeling as thinking you're finally happy and secure in life, only to have it all torn away. Comfort Me With Apples is this beautiful short little horror book that I think gives that exactly. Our main character lives in this world in which everything is perfect. She has the perfect husband. She lives in the perfect house that is painted the color of mother's milk. She has this perfect neighborhood and all of everything is perfect, but it's not actually perfect and it's horror. So you can guess what happens next. Because it's me, I'm also gonna give you a couple of recommendations that still have happy endings. And the first one is Funny Story by Emily Henry. This is the new Emily Henry. I am so, so happy I got to read this early because it is fantastic and I will shout from the rooftops, please come pick this up on release day. Our main character has just been broken up with by her fiance. They were gonna get married in like a couple of months. He's on his bachelor party and his girl best friend professes her love for him and he leaves our main character to go be with her. She was also in a long-term committed relationship. And so our main character who just got broken up with and this girl that her fiance is now off with, her ex-boyfriend fiance, I can't remember if they were engaged or not, is now hanging out with our main character and they become roommates. And then 
they fall in love. So it still has a happy ending, but at the beginning of the book, it's exactly as you described. Our main character thinks that everything is perfect. She's moved to this idyllic small town in Michigan. She's got her fiance who bought them this lovely home. And she kind of feels like the rest of her life is all set up for her. And then it all comes crashing down. And then this is kind of a rogue recommendation, but I'm also gonna recommend Neverwhere for this because our main character kind of goes through this similar situation as what happens in Funny Story. He's engaged at the beginning of this book and then meets this girl who's come from this mysterious world under the streets of London and ends up in the London below. And that causes his entire life to be turned upside down. There's beautiful found family in this, but it also is very much a story of someone who thought that they had their whole life put together and they were very happy and fulfilled and whatever, and it all came crashing down. If you're looking for a short dystopian bleak novel, you should pick up And Then I Woke Up. I lent this to my boyfriend. He has not returned it yet. Daniel, if you're watching this, can I have my book back, please? Thank you. This is super short. It's a zombie story, but it's not really a zombie story. The zombie affliction is that you think that there's a zombie apocalypse. So you see zombies, you start killing zombies, you start trying to protect anyone that's left. And then maybe one day you wake up and realize that there were no zombies and you have just killed regular people. It is very bleak. It does have some moments of hopefulness, but I would say overall, it's a pretty bleak book. And we're talking about these narratives and how dangerous they can be and how maybe to fight back against them and how hard that can be. I'm gonna give you some rapid fire books for fantasy books for people who don't typically read fantasy. I think the Every Heart of Doorway series would be great because it's portal fantasy and every other book is set in our world. They're also novellas, so you'll get bite-sized chunks of information. You're not, you're not reading a 700 page fantasy book. I think that would be a really great place to start. T. King Fisher's books I think are also a great place to start. Her middle grade fantasy, so uh, A Wizard's Guide to Defensive Baking, a Minor Mage, Illuminations, those are all great for people who are looking for an entry point in to fantasy. They're also really cozy and very sweet. Neil Gaiman, Kat Valente are also authors that I would recommend for intro to fantasy, specifically cozy fantasy. Speaking of fantasy, an adult fantasy book that doesn't focus on a love triangle, please read Kaikei. I want everyone to read this book. This author, Vaishnavi Patel, is coming out with a new book very soon and I cannot wait to get my paws on it. Actually, I think it might have just come out on Tuesday. Cannot recommend this enough. We are following one person throughout their entire life. Our main character is asexual. We follow them on their journey to being a mother and their experience with motherhood. And this book is primarily about connection. It's about genuine connection versus manipulation and political maneuvering. And it is one of my favorite fantasy books of all time, a beautiful standalone. And I cannot wait to pick up the new book by Vaishnavi Patel this spring. So no love triangle here, just amazing writing and good fantasy. If you're looking for an adventure for when you were tired of everything, read The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making. The title is long-winded, but the book is incredible. It is this girl who is just feeling like she's tired of everything. She's just sick of her life. And the green wind comes and scoops her up and takes her off to Fairyland and she has lots of adventures. And it's also written in a way where it will help you to appreciate your like normal regular life at the end of the book. I also had a couple people asking for horror for beginners. So I'm gonna give you a couple of recommendations. So the first one is Vampires of El Norte. I prefer The Hacienda by this author, but Vampires of El Norte is I think a perfect first horror book if you are someone who likes romance, who wants to try out the horror genre because this is primarily a romance story. If you're like a historical fiction romance girly, pick this up because it does have some true horror scenes in it and it will help you to understand if you like horror and if you wanna go pick up some more horror. If you're usually a fantasy reader and you wanna try horror, you should pick up possibly Deathless by Cat Valente. There are some scenes in here of war that do feel horror to me, but probably more so I would recommend Thistlefoot. This book did feel very horror. We're talking a lot about haunting in here and being haunted by events in the past. And I think this will give you an idea of if you like horror themes or not. This is a Baba Yaga retelling. We are following two siblings as they inherit this house on chicken legs. I also do want to recommend this to the person who's looking for like generational trauma type books. I think this also fits in that category and I absolutely adored it. Next up is a book that feels like roaming the halls of an abandoned mansion. I'm going to recommend my favorite haunted house book of all time, which is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. If you want like the original haunted house story, 
this is what you want. I promise. It's so, so good. The house itself, Hill House, has this like non-Euclidean geometry going on. It feels wrong. You feel wrong when you're in the house. We're following all these people who have interacted with some psychic something in some way, and they're trying to find some paranormal activity in this house. I'm also gonna recommend Lonely Castle in the Mirror if you want something that's a little bit less horror. This book does get a little dark at the end, but it's just one of my favorite things that I've ever read, and I think it gives the vibe of wandering around an abandoned mansion because it kind of feels a little intentionally disjointed and intentionally slow and intentionally hazy, which is kind of how I would feel walking around an abandoned mansion. We're following these kids whose mirrors start glowing. They go through the mirrors and there's this castle in the mirror. There's this woman in there, the Wolf Queen, who tells them basically that they need to find a key to a room and the first one who finds this key and enters this room will get a wish granted and once that happens the castle will disappear and so what seems like it should be this fast-paced adventure story of these kids trying to find this key ends up being a lot slower than that because the kids don't want the castle to disappear because they're all struggling in some way with their regular lives and they start to uncover things about each other and figure out the mystery that's at the heart of this. One of my favorite things that I've ever read. And the last one we're gonna do, I also want your recommendations for in the comments. So if you know of a book like this, please let me know because I also want a pirate or ocean dominated book that gives you all the salty vibes and sun. I loved this pirate book, but I don't think it's quite the, I want like a cozy pirate story and that is not this, but this is The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi and we're following this 40 year old retired pirate as she goes out for one last adventure. It is such a wild ride and it is very piratey and I loved every single second of it. But I also want recommendations for things that are a little bit cozier because there is Tress of the Emerald Sea, which is a cozy fantasy that is piratey, but the sea is made of spores and so it's not water. So it's not giving the salty vibes. So I want your recommendations in the comments for something that gives pirate summer cozy. And that's it. Those are all of my recommendations for the books that you have been looking for. If you want to be included in a video like this in the future, make sure you are subscribed and also following me over on Instagram. I often will ask for input on videos over on Instagram, so that's a great place to be involved behind the scenes in videos if you want to be. Please let me know in the comments if you have additional recommendations for any of the things that we chatted about today. I would love to hear those in the comments. We can help recommend books to each other. Otherwise, I love you all very much and I will see you next week. Bye!